All right. So I am, I've seen the presence of a quorum. I am going to call this meeting of governance organization legislation to order. It is March 31st and it is 10.32 a.m. And uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted via remote participation and we are being recorded. I'm just gonna check, uh, actually I know this for a fact, but I'm gonna do it anyway to make sure everybody can hear and be heard. Mandy. Present. And Pat. Present. And Sarah. Present. And Darcy. Yes. Great, so everyone is here and can be heard. Um, so um, we, I think our first item today is just to set the agenda. So um, I have an agenda, actually I'll put it up on the screen. I hope I can do this. That's good practice for later in the meeting. Let's see here. Um, oh, I see what it's gonna do. Okay, all right, that's not good. Hang on for a second. I have to do this apparently first. I could be reading, George. I understand, I understand. <laughs> There's so many things we could be doing. So let me try this again. Um, so let's try this again, share screen. There we go, so I have to open it first, okay. So here is the agenda for today's meeting. It's a full agenda, but there are gonna be a few changes, I think. Um, I'm not going to, item number four, stormwater and IDDE bylaw. We will touch it on it this morning, but only briefly um, because I forgot to invite Beth Wilson. And I think Beth Wilson should be present when we do the review. So we are meeting next week, April 7th, believe it or not, we agreed to that schedule. Uh -huh. So we have another meeting next week. Beth is already on on notice and she will be here, um, but we will talk about number four briefly. It's gonna stay where it is, but we'll not spend a lot of time on it. Um, and what else? Uh, I have placed item eight, a motion to take off the table, what we were talking about last time. And I think Darcy would like that to, to come earlier in the meeting. So I'm going to uh, bring that right to the attention of the committee at the start. Um, and Darcy, why don't you just make the motion to take something off the table. Now? Well, I, you, I think we should do it and decide. I think we need to decide. Um, my thought was to get to go to it first and have the discussion, assuming the committee wants to do that. Um, we could wait till item seven, um, or excuse me, item eight in the agenda. Um, I think we'll get there. Oh, I think it's good I'm to sorry? do it now. I'm, I'm ready with a motion. Yeah, I think so. So the first motion uh, that I think would be in order would be a motion to take uh, something off the table. And I can actually put that up on the screen as well. So I'm going to stop that share. I'm going to close that file. I'm gonna open this file. And there are two motions here. Okay, share screen. Hang on for one second. Okay, so we have two motions on the screen. Um, let me know if they're not large enough, I can make them bigger. So Darcy, the first motion, if you wish. Yeah, the first motion is just to take the issue off the table. So I move to take off the table the issue of whether there should be a unified town council procedure regarding term limits of, for, for appointment of members of the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, and resident members of the Finance Committee. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a second. All right, so we have a motion, we have a second. Um, discussion. Um, Darcy, why don't you start with your motion, please? Uh, yeah, I just want, I, we brought this up at the last meeting. Um, I know that there was um, some, some desire to hear um, the views of everybody on the committee. Sarah wasn't at, uh, able to come the last time because she was ill. Um, and I know there was some, some expression that we wanted to hear what she thinks. Um, I'd like to, um, obviously, I'm very interested in this issue and I feel like it's um, to some degree time sensitive. So I'd like to put it back on the table and see if um, we can deal with the larger issue today. Just to get a recommendation back to the full council. Okay. Um, any other comments uh, from the committee on this? Uh, Sarah, please. 
So I, I <laughs> George, you and I have talked about this ad nauseum for a really long time. I mean, yeah. so much. Mandy Joe, <laughs> same oh. thing. I mean, I, I don't think there's too many people in Amherst who don't know how I feel about this whole issue. Um, I'm beginning to feel that I'm in the minority in it, but I, I feel like we talk a lot about in the United States of America about a level playing field, about being able to make sure that um, anyone, no matter who they are, no matter what color they are, what race they are, whatever, has a fair shot at something. And I strongly feel that when it comes to, and you think we need to talk about this because I feel like the public should know that there are equal rules that would allow someone to have a chance at getting on planning board or ZBA. And I think there should be um, a process that's uniform. I think there should be questions that are uniform. I think that there should be, um, somebody should know how they can get on ZBA or planning board. And they should also know if they hired, how they, God bless you, they should stay you. on. Um, Sarah, I'm gonna interrupt you for a second and I beg your pardon, but um, I think right now, all we're trying to figure out is whether we want to take this off the table. Um, you're making a, a strong argument for, I think, what would come next, which would be um, some kind of recommendation. But it clearly, it sounds what you're saying is you would like this taken off the table so you can uh, address the larger issue. So um, I, I think I'd hold off on that argument for a moment just to see whether the committee wants to take this off the table at this point. And so are there reasons why this should be taken off the table? Um, one would be clearly that you did, weren't here and didn't get a chance to talk about it. And so it sounds like you would very much like to talk about it. Um, so are there any other reasons why you'd like to take this off the table or is that essentially it? it's an important issue and you want to talk about it? Yeah, I had mono and I wasn't able to be no, here. You're, yeah, and you don't have to explain just, why. It absolutely, yeah. Well, I know, but I think that sometimes there can be a perception that I just didn't want to be here or I no, had something no, no, more no, important no, to do. No, 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 but no. this is something that is near and dear to my heart. Right. And I, I okay. guess I'm not done okay. arguing. Okay, no, exactly. Okay, so you would like, fine. Um, Mandy. Um, look, the reason I moved to table it, there were a couple of reasons I moved to table it last time, and one was because Sarah was not here. Um, okay. She is now here, so that reason is gone. Mm -hmm. um, but the other reason I made the motion was because I felt like we were getting too close to the actual appointment process. Um, you know, when CRC and I think Sarah was on the committee at the time CRC had recommended GOL, the council moved this to GOL, that was last fall when there weren't appointments on the table. Um, there weren't processes happening. Um, and I can tell you right now that this week, um, the bulletin board notice is likely to go up for both planning board and ZBA. Um, the, the handouts that needed updated on the webpage are being updated today. The procedure that has been adopted said when there is a vacancy or impending vacancy, the chair shall cause that notice to go up. Um, I have already been in contact with CBA applicants that have prior submitted their CAF. I've already been in contact with those that are currently on the board whose terms are up, including at the planning board and CBA. Um, the CRC is set to take this up um, to move the process, start moving the process forward in on April 13th at its meeting. Um, we've already been trying to schedule the interview dates. Um, when you look at even if we moved today to finalize some sort of recommendation or not, the council won't take it up until April 12th. Rules, if being changed, need read at two different meetings under our rules of procedure. The next meeting is mid-May. At that point, CRC, and I don't know what the finance committee um, or GOL's plan is with finance committee, but at that point, CRC will likely have already been really in contact with procedure, have already been discussing questions and have already adopted its procedure. Um, so I still am of the opinion that doing so this late in the season or right so close to when things are happening at the committee level um, is too late. Um, I do want to finalize something, but I'm concerned that it will be done and be a change will be made mid process and that's not good either. So I don't support taking it from the table at this time. I do support taking it from the table in July or August when appointments again are done. Okay. 
Hi, Darcy. Hi, uh, Darcy. Your hand is up. I assume you're. Oh, my hand is up. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's your uh, yeah. hand. Um, I would I, I would respond to that though because I think that if if um, the council decided on a unified process, all, all CRC would need to do is notify applicants that this was in the works, that it may not have been finalized yet, but they should be on notice that this this may be a change. Um, so I don't I don't see any problem there. All right, um, any other comments on this matter um, of whether we wanna take this off the table now? Um, it, you know, the chair is of two minds here. Um, I think that Mandy raises a very good point that we're getting very close to, and we're gonna to have to decide today, actually uh, later in the meeting, hopefully when, if we have time, what we're gonna do going forward with our vacancy, which we do have one vacancy on finance. Um, so I'm a little concerned about the timing, um, but I'd also like to have this resolved. Um, I don't also feel that the, the, this is a deeply divided committee. Um, I don't know whether it's 3-2 or 2-3 or what it is, but it's, I don't think a recommendation is going to come out that's going to be um, a 4-1 or a 5-0. Um, that may not matter, um, but generally speaking, when you see a recommendation coming from a committee that's this divided, um, it doesn't have much force or its force is certainly diluted. Um, and so that's also a concern that I'd like, if a recommendation were to come from this committee, I'd like it to be one where we could uh, reach some kind of uh, consensus or at least broad consensus. And I think at this time right now, that's not possible. It might be possible later in the, in the summer when we have more time to, to think and talk about it. But right now, um, it seems to me that that's probably not gonna happen. And I don't really wanna take the entire meeting uh, to, to, to get to that point. Um, so I guess I'm really divided here between a desire to get this settled and a desire to not interfere with processes that are already underway and one that hopefully will begin very soon in our committee. So um, I see Sarah's hand up. Sarah, you're, you're muted. I think that if it's truly the concern that we would um start messing with a process that's already um, ongoing and that there are dead, I know there are deadlines to meet for um, certain things in the process that it would, it, would, it would definitely probably monkey with it if, if it was changed midstream. I'm not saying that it, it couldn't be resolved, but I understand the concern. Um, for me, I, I feel like it, it's also just, I feel like in some ways it's it's kind of um, I don't know a, like a, a paper excuse like this is not what we believe in so we might as well just you know we'll get to it later maybe it'll get passed off maybe it, it won't I think this whole issue is something that's really important because I think that we're seeing counselors who have said out loud that this is the appointments to planning board and DBA are political and they don't, they don't need any rules about who they're gonna put in. They've outright said they'll put in who they want. I, I have a real problem with that as far as whether or not that's actually democracy. And we have an election coming up. And I think that this, who gets appointed to ZBA and planning board and how they get appointed is really, really important. It's integral to, it's integral to zoning. It's integral to our master plan. It's, it's not nothing. And I think that, you know, I think it's important that the entire council, I think it's important that it, it be brought to attention of people who are voting again, how this council feels about it, how counselors feel about it and what the ramifications are. And I know that's not popular and I'm not trying to pick a fight. It's just honestly and genuinely how I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I see your hands up? Is that, um, oh. go ahead. No, it's residual. Okay. All right, I think we should go to a vote unless there's any um, any other counselor wishes to speak who hasn't spoken. And again, Darcy, your hand is still up, so I'm going to ask you to yeah, take it can't down. See, I can't okay. figure out how um, to put it down. All right. Um, I'm not sure I can do that either, but um, can the uh, host take hands? Well, right now we're in share screen, so I think that might be the problem. At least it is for me. I can't control anything. Um, all right, then I'm going to go immediately to vote. Um, and this is simply a, mo a vote on whether we want to take off the table. 
um, the uh, item that we were discussing last time. Um, and so I'm going to begin with uh, Darcy. Yes. And uh, Mandy? No. And uh, Pat? Aye. Okay. And uh, Sarah? Aye. And the chair is uh, a no for what it's worth, um, but it's 3 2. So the motion is uh, taken on, put back on the table. And now um, we can uh, have discussion um, on this uh, motion, which I think. I guess, Darcy, I'm going to have you um, just introduce it and speak to it. Um, and then we'll use this as the focus for our discussion. So, okay. Darcy. All right. That sounds good. Um, so, this is um, it, at our last meeting, um, there was a document in the packet that was um, in, the, in the referral from CRC, which gave a gave an example of all the different term limits policies of, uh, of OCA, of GOL, of CRC, and of the town manager. And um, so I, I looked at those and, um, um, and basically went mostly with the OCA um, uh, rule around term limits. So this is just, just confined to um, the, the, the process around um, reappointments um, to planning board, zoning board of appeals and resident members of the finance committee and whether or not a preference should be given to someone who um, has served uh, under six years one or one term. So I'm just gonna go through it. Um, and um, and explain if there are differences from that OCA policy. Um, so the first sentence is uh, generally, if a member of the planning board, zoning board of appeals, or a resident member of the finance committee has completed a first term, they are given preference in reappointment for a second or third term for at least six years um, to take advantage of the experience and expertise gained and to honor the voluntary time commitment of members. As long as the member is an active contributing member of the board or committee. Now at our last meeting, um, George had expressed reservations about members who maybe are quiet all the time, never speak up, um, don't contribute. So I added that in to deal with that issue of non-participating members or maybe at, you know uh, absenteeism although I think there's there is uh, there are other um, uh, other rules that we could have for absenteeism um, so uh, I did add the the actual um, limit of six years because of the fact that it came up in Oka and Alyssa at that time suggested that we just make a statement that normally um, the extent of terms is two three-year terms. And that's in the OCA language. Um, so that it made it clear that it you can't, you know, two one-year terms is not the equivalent of two three-year terms. So it it just made sense to be clear that what we're talking about is six years. Um, so, um, and then the, the second sentence is conversely, if a person has completed two three-year terms or three two-year terms, and there are other qualified applicants, preference would be given to a newcomer. In cases where special training or expertise is required, longer periods of service may be appropriate. So that last sentence is, is I think, in all of the different um, um, rules that have been put out. Um, I, uh, GOL uh, mentions two-year terms. OCA mentions three-year terms. So I put both of them in there because to make sure that people understood that it could be a difference. I mean, um, but that the total where where the where the where the flip would be would be at six years um and then the balance would be that we really want more we want to look for new members after six years so it's a balance between 
really valuing the experience that takes a long time to build up and the need for diversity and new newcomers. Um, so um, I, you know, I am strongly in favor of this because I want, um, you know, I, because it makes sense, because it allows um, uh, people with experience to stay. And as I said at our last meeting, I, I supported, I've supported people who I didn't agree with politically because they had experience um, as resident members of the finance committee. So I'll stop there for right now. I may have more to say later, but I will let other people speak. I'm waiting for people to raise their hands. And um, if you can use the raise hand feature, just raise your hand. I can see everyone. Sarah? So I support this because I feel like Oka tried really hard to come to a middle ground when we talked about this, because obviously there are political aspects of this. I don't think there should be, but obviously there are. And I think that having one process the town council follows that that has some rules about how long a term limit is or how long it isn't and what makes a, a member a contributing member is very important it, it it establishes some level playing field it means that no no ever no matter which political view is in majority that there's still a chance that someone who is not a favorite of a certain party and that's either and and let's just cut to the chase i mean i, I guess it's true it's there counselors have said too bad so sad this is political and we'll do what we want i am in a, a minority and that's okay but i think that we need people to feel like no matter how what their views are they have a chance to serve in town government and I, I think that this rule, it levels the playing field. No matter who is in majority, it levels the playing field for, for people who are in the public who want to serve on boards that are not elected. And I think that that's clear, consistent, and actionable. Fair enough. Uh, Mandy. So a couple of things. First to the sub, so first to my opinion on just the whole thing, and then I want to talk about some of the language in it. Um, I can't vote for it. Um, we were elected. We were elected to use our own beliefs, our own judgment, and our own, um, you know, judgment to make a determination as to who we best thought or think should be appointed to these three bodies. We are 13 individual members and this language takes away our individual abilities to make those judgments because it, when I read it, I really believe it says, if they've been there, they need appointed again, no matter what you think. And that is not something I was elected to do. Um, it's not something that someone who was appointed to a three-year term this summer um, or a two-year term this summer to finance, that someone who was elected in the fall and takes office in January should be told they have to do when they'd had no, at all, no say in who was originally appointed because they weren't on the committee. They weren't on the council. Um, I don't think it's right for us to hamstring our own individual members on what they can and cannot do and can and cannot think on appointments. And I truly believe this language does. I think it's up to us as individuals. The reason we have these appointments, particularly planning board and ZBA, I will say, Sarah, I agree, it's a political issue. And that's what the charter commission was thinking when they gave these appointments to the council. Um, by law, they, they have to be appointed, they can't be elected. And the Charter Commission believed that it needed to be as close to the electorate as possible because they were political. Um, this language and this adopting this rule would say that if the planning board does something that the entire town disagrees with 
and the council does something on zoning that the entire town disagrees with, when they all come up, if the council's completely turned over and reelected and new members are put into the council because of that, say, zoning change and people didn't want it and they want it um, you know, rescinded and planning board appointments come up, this language would prevent, prevent those people who were just elected by the council to change that zoning from changing the members of the planning board. And I just can't agree with that. On the language itself, um, what someone believes is a contributing member is totally subjective. Um, so that language to me is not clear because it's completely subjective. What does active contributing member actually mean? Um, second or third term for at least six years um, has completed a first term. We have a lot of people who get appointed to finish out another term. This language is not clear as to what happens with them when they say, you know, CBA has a unexpired term for one year coming up. We'll have to appoint someone to that unexpired term when they come up for potentially reappointment in a year and they want reappointed that this language fits that. But what when they come up for reappointment for three years after that, what applies? Because there is state law that says for unexpired terms, they must be three years. We can't do what Councillor Brewer likes to say is and say, pick whatever term you want. It doesn't always have to be three. The state law says, unless it's an unexpired term, it needs to be three years. And state law says, if it is an unexpired term, it can only go as long as that unexpired term. So in that sense, this language is also, prevent, is also problematic because it doesn't deal with those that have started with unexpired terms. So I'll stop there for now. Okay, um, Pat. Unmute, Pat. Uh, Mandy, I couldn't hear the last part of you when you were saying state law about unexpired terms. It said, could you just repeat that? I couldn't hear it. Yeah, so state law, there are two sections, one dealing with appointments to planning board and one dealing with appointments to zoning board of appeals that says if someone, if there's an unexpired term out there, that mm -hmm. the appointment that is made is to fill the unexpired term up to the time that term would expire, which means zoning board, as we know, just had a resignation, that term expires June 30th, 2022, when we appoint someone to that unexpired term, we can't say, oh, it goes three years. We have to say it only goes to June 30, 2022 under state law. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Darcy. Actually, yeah. I want to... Oh, oh okay. Ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Is that all right? I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, That's fine. I don't, um, I hear what you're saying, Mandy, about um, given preference, uh, you're defining it in a specific way that I don't agree with. Um, uh, I get, there's no, it, you're given preference. It's like giving in a, what, if you had a scale that you were using, maybe you'd get a point uh, for already being there. But I think that I, I don't feel that I have to vote for someone who is uh, been on uh, for a year or has had a single term. Um, and I feel like I try to evaluate that person and would make a decision. Um, and it wouldn't control uh, how I would vote. So I don't agree with you there. Um, and in terms of, so I think that's, um, and the idea of what is a contributing member, yeah, that is subjective. And, and I'm also, I guess I'm also feeling like preference is subjective. Um, so I, I don't feel trapped by this in the way that you're describing it. I'm going to, uh, well, Darcy, go ahead. Yeah, my my hand is just perpetually up and I do not know why. Oh, okay, um, you don't have to speak. I mean, if, if you okay, wish to I'll speak, just please put my go hand ahead. up like this if I want to speak. Fine, okay, fair enough. Then, <laughs> um, Sarah, before you speak, actually, I want to, I actually have some sympathy with um, 
Uh, I mean, the language that we're presented with here, I think Pat's put her finger on it. Um, it's a preference, but it still leaves it up to the individual member of the committee and eventually the individual member of the council to weigh other factors. It doesn't, what I was afraid of and, and will resist completely is any kind of, of ironclad sort of statement that, you know, once appointed, you, you basically can be reappointed no matter what. Um, and this does not do that. Um, and actually the language of this uh, 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 motion is pretty much the language that we follow in finance. Uh, so when we sit down and uh, I assume in a couple of weeks or a month or so um, and review our own selection criteria, uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty much this kind of language. We will give a preference to people who have already served um, for pretty much the reasons that are stated here. Um, and um, uh, so I guess, uh, my, I'm struggling with um, Mandy with your thought that somehow this locks us in. Um, I could, as Pat said, I could easily be in a situation where someone has served for three or four years or whatever. And for whatever reason, in spite of this language, I could decide not to vote to support them. Um, and I hopefully could say why, though I think all of us would acknowledge, at least I would say for myself, that there are sometimes situations where you um, simply are reluctant to state explicitly what your reservation is out of respect for uh, the people that you are dealing with. And I'm not sure that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, I'm wondering if possibly this language uh, does find a kind of uh, common ground or at least a, a middle point um, where one is still free to uh, vote. It's a preference, it's not, a, it's just, it's a, as, as uh, Pat said, it's scalar, it's not absolute. Um, it's, you know, if you had a point system, you, maybe you get two points for the fact that you've been on the committee and you've been, and I think contributing member Mandy, quite frankly, um, it is always going to be subjective, right? Um, basically, we reach out and we ask, you know, the chair, or we, you know, through the, 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 the grapevine, we find out, you know, is this person, you know, active? Do they participate? Um, are they, are they, you know, contributing member or not? And I think that is important information, but I don't think it's that hard to, to find out. Um, so I don't have a problem with that language either. I do want to make sure that the language is uh, clear. So the issue about um, people who have like a year term and then uh, they get reappointed for two more years or three more years, you certainly could have a situation. I think we might have had it most recently where someone, if they were reappointed, would actually have gone beyond six years of service. Um, and that would seem to me to be, and it was in my mind at the time, a reason, one reason among a number of reasons why I was not willing to support that particular candidate. Um, so six years seems like a reasonable amount. We're certainly free to go beyond that. Um, and it's the comment about expertise or training, I mean, that really is somewhat, <laughs> shall we say vague, um, but it's there. So um, Mandy, please. So one definition of preference is favor given to a person. Mm -hmm. You know, favor shown to one person or thing over another or others. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't interpret it as all else, you know, you could say all else being equal, you have to pick this person. That's what preference means. The mm. question is, what does all else being equal mean, right? Um, which is why I actually think it takes away our ability to judge stuff because first of all, all else being equal is, is um, under, but it, it is, despite what Sarah says of we need something that is democratic and all, we are specifically saying by using the word preference, we're going to favor someone over someone else simply because they sat on the board for three years and might have been a contributing men member, depending on what your idea of contributing member is. And I truly think that when I have to put a bulletin board posting out that says, oh, hey, we have an impending vacancy, but you know, we have to give preference to someone that's already sitting in that seat. Are we really going to get people applying for that? Are we really going to expand our knowledge um, of who wants to do stuff? I really think some sort of language like this not only hampers the council, but does tell residents that might have just moved here, don't bother applying because we're going to give preference to the person who's already there. Mm -hmm. And and that could happen depending on when these seats come up. 
for six years in a row, for seven years in a row. It could just, you, you might appoint and then the next new non-preferenced opening could be six years later. I don't think that's what we want. Sarah. Sarah, you yeah, unmute, please. Absolutely, thank you. So here it is. We first, this council was brand new. We had our first appointments process and we had to try to figure out some rules and a process. I'm gonna say that at that time, there were people who definitely had a preference for certain people. As Mandy Jo says, you should be able to use your own judgment and they definitely weren't crazy about other people. And at that point, the, a lot of the people who are arguing that arguing right now that oh, six years, can you imagine? Well, <laughs> I mean, there were people who had been on for a pretty long time. We were asking to be on a lot longer. And the same people who are telling me, well, that's just crazy, are the people that were saying, I don't know, we should have people on for at least 12 years because we need at least 12 years to even have, you know, for them to even have some expertise. And why should we even have training? I think that I'd like to just cut it down to what it is. And this is what I would like to draw attention to is that you know, maybe, maybe we shouldn't have any rules, right? Because what I'm hearing is I will change or bend what I think about term limits or what I think about somebody being um, a good candidate. I will do that by my own political preference. And that is my right. And that's why I was elected and that's it. And any argument that I give about that person might be a little bit of smoke and mirrors. I can tell you when I first started that OCA process and I sat there, I, in my nativity of thinking what, what, how things worked was that it, it shouldn't be that way, that there, we should be listening to other people and people should have a chance. And I, I honest to God, just sat there and, and tried to figure out what made a strong committee. I really did. I am not joking when I say that. Um, so I guess I just mostly want to, you know, I guess I do want to bring this to a discussion and be completely honest so that people know, right? Either we are a council that wants to listen to other views that we, we want. When we go into a discussion, you know, we're open to listening to another person. Maybe we would be moved by it, or we're just saying, look, this is real life. We're elected by the people. And we will do what we feel the people that elect us want us to do. I just, for me, I have a differing opinion and I just want to bring it out there. If, if that's what the, most of the counselors are saying, I just, then let's put it on record. This is how the council feels and this is what we're doing. And I guess maybe that would, you know, take away a lot of, you know, fruitless discussion later when it's not really a discussion. I want to raise, if I may, uh, the question of recruitment um, and get the thoughts of my colleagues on that. Um, I think Mandy raises a, a, a problem that I'm certainly thinking about right now. Um, we're looking at, you know, uh, someone on, you know, on finance uh, that we there'll be vacancy, quote unquote. But given our current language, which is pretty much this language, um, we would normally give preference to someone who is continuing for the reasons that are stated here. Um, assuming they've been uh, a contributing member, they've been active, they've, in other words, they've come to the meetings, they've engaged, um, the chair you know, says they're fine. Um, you watch a meeting or two and you think, okay, you know, that's true, that's what I see. Um, and experience matters, I think. We can't have it both ways. You can't say that you know, experience doesn't really matter and then experience does matter. I think we agree that for the three bodies that we're looking at, um, there's a learning curve. Uh, the chair has been very explicit about finance. There's a steep learning curve. Um, and so I would be very reluctant to take somebody off of finance um, after two years, unless there were very good reasons, simply because they now have two years under their belt. Um, so um, what about the issue of recruitment though? When we put out, we're gonna put out a notice in a couple of weeks uh, for a, a vacancy that according to our own language is really not you know, assuming, and again, it's a big assumption, assuming the person uh, applies for, uh, you know, wants to continue, um, we're gonna go through this whole rigmarole. And in fact, it's extremely unlikely, as far as I can see, that uh, 
we would replace them. Um, so what about recruitment? How do we, how do we, you know, the other approach is, you know, we look at each appointment in the whole, in total. And uh, so there's no guarantees. There's no guarantee that just because you've been on this body for two years or three years or four years, uh, that you're going to get reappointed. Uh, we certainly take it into consideration. It's certainly valuable. Um, maybe you might even call it a preference, but bottom line, um, we're going to make a decision based on the strength of the candidates that are applying and the state of that committee at the moment. And, you know, uh, so it's still an open question. Um, so those are two very different ways of thinking about it. And the issue of recruitment, when you honestly go to somebody and say, should I apply to finance? Should I apply to planning board? And what do I say? Say for finance, what do I say? You know, um, yeah, I guess I just say yes, even though I know that the chances of anyone getting that appointment are, are very, very slim. So I do have an issue about recruitment. And I wonder if the other approach, which says, you know, yes, it matters, experience matters. Yes, there's a preference for that. But bottom line is we're going to look at each uh, appointment in total. We're not going to uh, just, you know, basically guarantee it. So let me see, let's start. Um, let me start with, I didn't see the hands in order. Um, so, uh, first. okay, Darcy's first, go ahead. Um, I, I just want to point out that, um, that we are, um, the CRC policy is a big change. It is uh, very different from what the other committees came up with and what the town has, historically done for many, many years, as far as this preference has been there forever. And as George said, and others have said, it does, it, you know, the town and these committees did not put it in place because it's an, it's, it's a, a, an in stone requirement. It does have a fudge factor, as everybody mentioned, and the town would never have had it in its handbook if it didn't. Um, so, um, I guess I feel like all the people, you know, like the people who are composed of the original OCA committee, the town council members, the people that are on this committee came up with different rules from what CRC came up with. So that's 10 counselors, I think, <laughs> that came up with a different rule, that, a rule that's more like what I have here, um, that does have this preference. And as George said in our last meeting, that he felt like that GOL's uh, procedure is the most humane one out there, which I agree with. Um, so <laughs> I guess I feel like um, I, I don't really understand what we're arguing about. It feels like um like it's um it's all about an upcoming uh, planning board appointment and that we're worried about that one member of the planning board that has a minority opinion out of seven people and that i i have a hard time understanding why um we are going through this about that because I don't even understand why we wouldn't want to have a diversity of voices on the planning board. Um, so that's those are two different issues there. Um, but I just feel like um, we need to we need to move this issue onto the full council because it's a broad it's broader than this group. Uh, again, I'm going to go with Pat. Um, Pat, you need to oh, unmute Pat. Um, I had it off, which was good because I got a telephone call. Um, you would have been, it would have been ringing in your ears, um, but I do forget. Uh, I'm going back to uh, the last time we selected a resident for finance committee um, and the choices had come down to Mary Lou Tileman for me um, or Bernie Kubiak and Mary Lou had incredible experience on finance.
But I went with Bernie uh, Kubiak because he was bringing an aspect of municipal uh, finance work that was different than the experience Mary Lou had. Uh, and so while the preference would have gone to Mary Lou, I voted for someone else. That's my job as a counselor. My job as a counselor is to evaluate um, who is applying and who I think would be uh, a valuable member of a committee. And so, you know, the bottom line is you do need to look at uh, each appointment. I don't think this re affects recruitment at all. I think people who are interested in these committees apply. And um, I honestly don't see, but I do see um, a pushing away of minority voices. And, and in this instance, I'm not talking about racial minorities. I'm talking about um, differences in opinion around planning or zoning. Um, and I've seen that happen since we were counselors in the beginning. I don't, so I feel perfectly comfortable maintaining this rule the way it is. Um, and I think that there's so many scare tactics tactics out where it's going to affect uh, recruitment uh, or, oh, people aren't going to think they can do the job. If they have to do this, uh, then they can't do the job and they won't apply to be counselors. And that's, all of those things I, I find are scare tactics. Um, I'd rather go with the facts and I have not seen recruitment affected by this. Andy. Well, a couple of things. We're a new council because we changed a form of government in town. And one of the biggest things the Charter Commission heard about changing the form of government and the things that we needed to address was appointments to planning board and ZBA because no one was happy with how they were working in the past. So saying and arguing that we need to do this now because that's how we've always done it to me is something that is just an invalid argument because we're in a new system and we don't have to do things the way we've always done it. And in fact, we should be looking seriously at not doing some things the way we've always done it because of the issues that the old way had and people weren't happy with. As to recruitment, um, I respect what you've said, Pat, in your belief that it won't affect it, but you're not the one <laughs> having to write the emails that say, are you still interested while well, knowing about a preference like this and asking people to submit a um, statement of interest that might take them a long time to write to come to an interview with at the GOL for finance is a 15 minute commitment, but for zoning board and planning appeal, for zoning board of appeals and planning board, depending on the number of applicants, that are there could be multiple hours because they're done in tandem all at the same time with if we have 10 applicants, everyone answers the first question, then everyone answers the second, then everyone answers the third. And if the result is a fait accompli or believed to be a fait accompli, I think that's in, frankly rude to the people that are, are not the reappointment members. Um, and so I, I guess I just seriously have problems with the wording preference. Um, because I think it does send a message to people who aren't on the board that says, well, if you're not there already until there's an open position and an open seat, you don't have a chance. Whether or not that's actually the case, I feel like that's the message it sends. Um, and mm -hmm. and I, I will say, my if we were going to have a rule, my rule would be there aren't any rules, frankly, um, mm -hmm. that each counselor makes their own decision. I would not have the council determine term limits. I would not have the council make any statement regarding appointments or not. We have to, by charter, advertise these positions as vacancies. Um, and that is something the Charter Commission felt was absolutely necessary in order to bring new people into government. Um, and so my position would be we don't. And I say this as someone who takes very uh, seriously the idea we need different opinions on committees um, and tries to 
comply with that. And one of the very first votes on committee appointments did comply with that. I'd like to uh, to wrap this up and move to a vote. Um, and one thought I'm having, which I think Darcy's expressed earlier and maybe Sarah as well, but and I don't know if uh, Pat would agree, but there, there might be some merit simply in having this brought to the council for the council to finally make a decision as a body. And um, so that in itself um, is a reason for me to see this um, go forward because there are clear divisions here. Um, I myself am feeling at the moment um, that this is fine. Um, I hear Mandy's arguments, I hear her concerns, but I think when I think about this, um, in fact, I think there is a preference given to people who have been serving on these bodies and that probably should just be stated, um, but it does not say mm -hmm. that, that they're guaranteed. And I could imagine a situation where someone has quote unquote a preference and Pat's given an example. I think Darcy's given an example too, where someone has quote unquote preference, but you make a different decision and you can explain why you can articulate it. So this does not, I mean, I was concerned about our hands being tied. I don't think this ties our hands. Um, I'm still a little worried about recruitment, but I think Mandy put her finger on it. That's because I'm going to have to write the email <laughs> to all these people, you know. Um, but I think there, I can find, find ways to do this, um, including reaching out to people and explaining to them exactly what this means. It's 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 not uh, it's not a done deal. It's not a slam dunk. But in all honesty, um, if you've been serving on on these three bodies, and um, you have done a, a credible job, um, you would have a preference. On the, now, but at the same time, someone could think, you know, I just don't like what Smith's been doing on the ZBA, or I don't like what Smith's been doing on planning board, or I really don't like what Smith's been saying on finance, and I'm going to vote against Smith. And I think, as Pat said, you're perfectly free to do that. So um, it sounds like this is something that the council needs to decide. And this sort of, I think, Prince presents it pretty clearly. And I know Mandy will make her argument and, and others will make their arguments. I, I, I'm not looking forward to us taking up the time, um, but that's the nature of our job. I mean, I think you know that's not really a very good reason not to do this. Um, so I'm leaning in support of it, simply to move it forward as a recommendation um, and then let the council um, decide as a body whether they really wanna do this or not. Um, so that's where I'm sitting at the moment. Um, so I unless, the motion, George. Uh, I believe. I don't um, think I ever made the motion. I don't think you have actually. So yes, why don't you go no, ahead and make the that. motion? Okay, um, I move to recommend the town council amend its rules of procedure to add section 10.10 .10 as written below reappointment of members of the planning board, zoning board of appeals, and resident members of the finance committee term limits. Yeah, I think um, you'd have to say something like what, regarding term limits? Um, that would probably need to be clarified, but reappointment of members of the planning board, zoning board of appeals and resident members of the finance committee um, re regarding term limits in the matter of term limits. Okay, I'll Not do something. that. I don't think a semicolon is gonna work there. Um, okay. Regarding term limits. Yeah. Uh, so generally, if a member of the planning board, zoning board of appeals or resident member of the finance committee has completed a first term, they're given preference and reappointment for a second or third term for at least six years to take advantage of the experience and expertise gained and to honor the voluntary time commitment of members as long as the member is an active contributing member of the board or committee. committee. Conversely, if a person has completed two three-year terms or three two-year terms and there are other qualified applicants, preference would be given to a newcomer. In cases where special training or expertise is required, longer periods of service may be appropriate. That is the motion. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. DeAngelis seconds. All right. We've had a pretty thorough discussion. Um, I'm concerned about the language. Is there any concerns about the language of this motion from the sponsors or from any member of the committee? Any further discussion, concerns? Um, Mandy, please. 
Sorry, I was just made a co-host, so I can't actually raise my hand under the panelist section now. Um, right, I'm still concerned that there's nothing in here that clarifies what happens when it would deal with the partial terms and everything. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, all of that is... Why don't we just add a second or third term or um, for an unexpired term for at least six years? If a person is completed two for a second or third term or for an unexpired term for at least six years. Well, the unexpired, they'd still, it, it, I guess it's, has completed a first term. That's not necessarily defined. Um, is a first term a full term? Is it a partial term? You know, second or third term, uh, are they complete terms? Are they not complete terms? It's just, it, it, to me, it's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not clear. N multiple places in here are not clear regarding what happens if someone's served a partial term. Even the conversely, if a person has completed two three-year terms or, two, two, or three two-year terms relates only to full terms, not to any partial terms. Um, it just doesn't deal with an instance that we regularly see um, which is partial terms. Right. And then I guess my, my issue with the last sentence is we're, this refer, refers to only three boards, which I believe many counselors have argued all three um, are cases where special training and expertise is required. Right. <laughs> and right. so right. Um, right. Are, is it really a six year limit? Is it not? Um, it, that that sentence applies to all three boards. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. again, leaves it unclear. I'm I'm bumbling around here with the partial term. Uh, it's if uh, Mandy Joe resigns from GOL and I get appointed to replace her and she has a year left of her term. I'm, re I'm taking her term. So it's ended at the end of that first year. Any term that I would begin after that would be on my own. It would not be fulfilling someone else's term. So um, as I said, I'm bumbling here. I'm not, I'm not sure how to write it. I don't, I, what you're filling is a very specific term. Um, so if you then apply independently, uh, should that be counted against you? I don't, uh, hmm. well, It seems that the basic idea is that six years is considered sufficient time for someone to serve on one of these bodies, give or take. Um, that so we can certainly, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, George, go ahead. Well, no, it's just, it's, that seems to be the magic number. Yeah. And whether it's, it's, you know, so we've had a situation where someone served a one-year partial term and then they served, um, what was it, two two-year terms and now they wanted to serve another term for two years and that would have made them seven years. And, and I think one could easily say fine and just vote for them, recommend them. One could also, using this language, say that, well, you know, we do give a preference for people um, up to six years, but after that, we start looking for newcomers. Um, and so... I'm not sure the partial term is really um, that much of a problem because as long as it's clear to all of us here, including Mandy, that, and I'm not sure it is, that basically this is, a, you know, we're looking at six years. And beyond that, um, however it stacks up, whether it's partial term, full terms, whatever it is, um, beyond six years, um, we are going to give a preference to a newcomer. Um, so that's the way I read this. It, but maybe that's not be a lot simpler if it really is just six years, because the conversely could probably be read something like if a person has, if reappointment would, and I'm, I don't know whether it is, but you don't have to deal with two, three year terms or three, two year terms. You could talk about would exceed six years on a board or committee then, and there are other qualified ap applicants preference would be, but the question is, is it if the new appointment would exceed six years or is it once they've served six years? I mean, this is, this is where it's very unclear. When does that preference stop? When the new appointment would put you past six or when 
you've already been past six or at six. I can I just talk? Please oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I'm sorry, Pat. No, Sarah had her hand oh, up. I'm sorry, Sarah. I'm no, sorry it's okay, Pat. It's okay. All right. What I was going to say is I'm comfortable with just saying uh, if a person has completed six years of service on a committee, preference would be given to a newcomer. But then this uh, last line becomes critical. In cases where special training or expertise is required, longer periods of service may be appropriate. Um, but Pat, may I interrupt you for a second? I think you would agree, and again, speak up, you will, I know, that these all three of these bodies fit that description. So either yeah. the sentence just comes out because it, it's, it's pointless, um, or we, you know, uh, because it's not a, in cases where, in all three cases, right, special training or expertise is required. We don't put somebody on finance if they don't have some kind of financial background. We don't put somebody, you know, a zoning and planning board, I think, is, is tougher. Um, and, and there, I think, you know, do you have to be an, an architect or, you know, I, I think the answer is no. Um, so, um, yeah. yeah. I, 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 if someone, if you want to remove the final sentence, I'm fine with that. I, I don't actually like that sentence. I put it in there because that's been in all the versions. No, I understand. It, it, it's, right. another, it's another fudge factor, you know? Um, so, so what can I just say that I think yeah. in OCA, we, Sorry, go ahead, Sarah. I think that we we really talked about this in OCA, and right. I think that what we really felt was that what we came down to was like basically, even if you were serving out a term, it was it six years, was it twelve, was it sixteen? And I think that it's true that I think that that all of us felt like six years in total was the point at which somebody, you know. M the committee itself or the board might then um, be healthier if someone after six years, you know, maybe was replaced by someone new. So I'm fine with saying six years. I don't really think I need to, and I know that it, it comes from an actual law we have in Massachusetts. So I would be fine even too, if we wanted to just put, you know, refer to that law, but say six years, I don't know. I, I'm fine with the six years part, and I definitely think that if we're that we are talking about all three, and I'm fine with that as well. It shouldn't be, shouldn't it be consecutive? Because imagine somebody serves for say five or six right, years, yeah. they step aside, yeah. and then a few years later they come back. Right. Um, so um, I don't think we would turn them down because they served a bunch of years back for six years. Um, yeah. necessarily. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. So it would be isn't it consecutive years that we're really concerned about? Yes. I don't even know if there's a, yeah, I would say yes. And I don't even know if there's a concern. I think what originally came out was people were saying, you cannot take all the expertise off a committee. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Like we, these are, you know, we need some people who have served it for some period of time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that this was trying to, you know, either. I think the only thing that this was trying to do was, was to respond to the counselors who were saying, look, these are trained positions. And I think that we have to give, we have to keep a certain amount of expertise there. Mm -hmm. And so, in other words, taking advantage of the experience and expertise gained, which is what is stated. Yes, I agree. So a suggestion has been made that conversely, if a person, well, I, I don't even mean conversely. So, um, so if a person uh, has completed um, or has or will complete six consecutive years and take everything else out, preference would be given to a newcomer. If, if a person has completed or will complete six consecutive years. Um, and there are other qualified applicants. Is that will, what people are? Um, will complete. Does that mean if I have four years and I want, I'm applying for a two year term, I wouldn't be given preference? No, you'd be fine. You know, um, no, so it's still six years. It's still, but the issue is if you've served five years, and you want to serve two more years, this right. language would suggest that gotcha. not that you couldn't do it, but that there would be a preference for a newcomer. Um, so um, I need language here. So I would strike conversely. If a person has completed six years. Let's try it. Consecutive years on a committee 
on one of on blah blah on I, I would use the word served instead of completed. Okay. Okay. Has served or will have served. So six. for instance, in the case of someone who served five years, they have not served six years. But in, in applying or reapplying, they actually would have seven years of service. And so if a person has served, oh, God, that's not really it, is it? Will have served six years. I'm just going to write it for the moment. And there are other qualified applicants. Preference would be given to a newcomer. Um, that doesn't solve my problem. You could say will have served six years after reappointment or, or more than six years after if reappointed, something like that. Mm -hmm. The person has served six years or will have served more than six years if reappointed. If reappointed. And there are other qualified applicants, preference would be given to a newcomer. And leaving this sentence and, in. And can we change another word to change the would to may preference may be given to a newcomer? Because isn't that still a decision? Well, I don't know. Never mind. I think the yeah, statement no, is that's, that. No. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's an Probably word. be will, not would. Yeah, would this. We probably should be active tense. Preference will be given to a newcomer. Yes. Okay. Can you change that, George? I will. I'm just trying He's to. Looking for preference it. will be given. To a newcomer. Okay. Um, we still have the issue where the last sentence is needed. And maybe we should just leave it in. So, I mean, that, that goes to, to my thinking, that goes to Pat's question of will or may, I think. Um, right. All right. You know, I think if we keep it will, you might actually, I, I don't know. <laughs> the first clause is, well, I'm just saying the first clause seems extraneous, but then just cutting the first clause and saying longer periods of service may be appropriate. Um, you know, I, it, it's the special training and all, whereas if you go with maybe given to a newcomer, um, and I still like will, um, but maybe it's the first clause in cases where special training and you could just say, in, circum in certain circumstances, longer periods of service may be appropriate. Yeah, I think this goes to the situation where um, you have a committee chair that's been on for six years and, and nobody else in the committee, even though they have experience, wants to be chair or is willing to be chair or has had enough experience to be chair. I think that's it's it's more about that, not that they don't have experience and expertise. Um, so maybe we could say in certain circumstances, but that is very loosey goosey. It is, but well, I, I think to say there may be circumstances where longer periods of service service is appropriate. Yeah. Again, it's loosey goosey. Yeah. I think, I think it's better in the original language because then at least it means, you know, that there might be somebody that has way more um, experience than others. Um, so. Um, but see, that's exactly what I'm thinking of with, say, with finance. You could have somebody apply who just is, you know, like stellar. I mean, has, it ticks all the boxes. But the person up for reappointment maybe it ticks only one of the boxes um so does this policy tie us in it, i don't think it does but you have to be able to, i'm sorry you have to articulate how you're going to actually vote for you're going to knock somebody off the committee who's only been on there for two or three or four years because quite frankly you think this new candidate just you know has special skills or whatever that just are really needed i don't see why you can't do that i don't think this policy prevents you from doing that um does it yeah, I, I'm, I, would, I would go along with either leaving it the way it has been for all these years or getting rid of it, but not changing it to just any circumstance. Um, 
What I like about it is that it acknowledges what I take to be a fact about this proposed policy, which is that um, there are other factors that are relevant. It's not just that you've been an active contributing member. Yes, you have a preference, but there are circumstances in which um, longer periods of service could be appropriate. Right. Andy? So if we're using the word preference in the way it sounds like I don't interpret it, but many other people do, maybe it is in certain circumstances, longer or shorter periods of service may be appropriate. You know, because what I'm hearing from mm -hmm. the committee members is that preference is not how I traditionally interpret preference, which is you, you kind of get it. And then you, it, it has to be a really clear case not to give it to you. Um, versus um, that's how I interpret it. But what I'm hearing is for many mem for many of the committee members here, it doesn't necessarily have to be a really clear case. You just have to have a good reason, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be obvious to others. Um, and if that's the case, we should maybe state flat out that shorter periods of service may also be appropriate. I think we already, we already have a clause that would deal with that where, where um, you know, it could be interpreted that people aren't active contributing members of the committee. Um, and I, that's not I, the only, what George exactly. stated right. is that's not the only reason when a shorter period of service right. may be appropriate. I mean, I don't like what Smith's doing on planning board. I'm sick and tired of Smith and I want Smith out. And it's perfectly legitimate for me to vote Smith out, even though I agree that normally I'd give preference to, uh, to service and all the rest of it. It's just not enough to, to convince me that Smith should be given the boot. Um, no, this, that, doing that negates the entire thing. Um, you know, if you're saying that we're putting in a sentence that now allows us not to have a preference for, for uh, uh, for appointment for six years. That's the out right there. So I I would not agree to that. Um, so Darcy, it sounds like basically what you're saying is preference for you means that all things considered, no matter what you think about this person and what they're doing on X, Y, and Z board, um, basically they get, they get reappointed. Uh, no, preference means they get additional points. You know, Fine. They, and they and those point. points aren't enough to convince me to keep Smith because Smith has just been doing things on planning board that I think are loopy and or, you know, whatever. And I just don't want Smith anymore on planning board, which seems perfectly legitimate for me to do that. I, and maybe the vote may be 12 to one, but I just don't want to vote for Smith. Um, right. And I, this allows me to do that. But if we have a policy which says you can't vote against Smith because Smith gets a, a preference in the sense that Mandy means, that basically, unless Smith, you know, sets fire to the council room, um, Smith gets reappointed. Um, so I like this language because it is there, there's leeway in it, but it does acknowledge what I think is an important thing to acknowledge, which is that it does matter that people have served. We want to recognize that and respect that, um, but it's not the only factor. Now that's not all that different from CRC, um, but it is. This is more explicit, and I can live with it as long as it has that fudge factor and that this is what this has. But if you don't want something with a fudge factor, then I think you need to write this differently and I won't vote for it, but that's just one vote. Um, but um, this has a fudge factor, but it also acknowledges things that I think we need to acknowledge and have traditionally been acknowledged um, yeah, and do already, matter. We already have the fudge factor with the preference and the, the final sentence is simply to allow the situation where, you know, the chair is, you know, far more experienced than everybody else, et cetera, et cetera. Um, right. So well, this, this is your motion, so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'd like to go back to the original language, which I think I've mangled now, but um, uh, in case, so you would like to keep in cases where. Right. Special training or expertise is required, longer periods of service may be appropriate. I guess I going back to what George was just saying in the first sentence, I don't see a fudge factor for anything other than active contributing member that other than if they're that that the preference is there unless they're not a contributing member or not an active member and and it, it goes to what what 
a person's definition of preference is. Mm -hmm. If we get a case where a reappointment is there and um, a person who is would be new to the board is well more experienced than that reappointment person because they happen to serve on a planning board or a zoning board of appeals or a finance committee in another town for 12 years, you know, they, I'm not sure this language allows us to say that person should be appointed over this reappointment person. And that's, and, and I think now I'm confused with Darcy's comments would does she believe that language allows this? Well, it sounds like she does not believe the language allows that. And she does not want the language to allow that. I can understand that. She's perfectly free to write a motion any way she wishes, which is what we're trying to do here. But it sounds like, Darcy, you want a motion which essentially would uh, make it pretty clear that that would not be a permissible uh, reason. Namely, that I don't like Smith or that... Um, you know, so and so just has so much better, more experience, and, and brings so much more to this body that uh, replacement makes sense. That would not be, you'd like yeah, that I, not to be possible. I simply want this issue to to go before the full council because um, you know the main issue with me is that I I want a unified procedure that all committees use for appointments, that it doesn't make sense for one committee to have a more restrictive procedure than other committees. Well, so, it doesn't make sense to me. And right, right. I, I, um, I think we're going around in circles here. Well, this is specifically about term limits. It's not about procedure. It's not about whether there's a, you know, a statement of interest about how the interviews, so we do our interviews differently than CRC does their interviews. Um, and we'll get to that soon enough. Um, but this is not about interview process. It's not about statements of interest. It's not about CAFs, not about any of that stuff. It's just about term limits. That's so, part of the interview. That's part of the, the application process. So. It, it, term limits is a different issue, Mandy. No. This isn't procedure at all. This is, this is, this right. is directly about who gets recommended or not recommended, right. which is not a procedural thing in my this is mind. A policy. This is a policy. Yeah, this is a policy. Choice. Yeah, this is and policy. So if you want a unified procedure, then this is not something right. that unifies a procedure. This is directly to whether the count each individual counselor has what they have to think and how what they have to apply to their own belief on who should be recommended when you're in committee or who should be voted on when you're in the council. It's about whether or not CRC should have its own different policy about term limits from everything else, um, and which it does have, and whether the recommendation based on that should carry weight when the full council hasn't agreed to it. That's what it's about. Um, mm -hmm. And so that is why I, you know, all along have really wanted the full council to decide on this. Um, so, um, yeah. Well, you I, might not what you want because the majority of the council will go with CRC. That 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 may be the case, but I also think that it's a, it's an issue that should be publicly aired and not just aired in the GOL committee where, you know, <laughs> like maybe one person is watching us, but you know the that. We don't. Right. It's it's an important issue that 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 the public should know about, um, and so that's why I would like to to recommend that the council look at it, even though you know it may not pass the council. So um, I'm going like to do, call the uh, question. Uh, well, I think we first just need to get some agreement as to what the actual motion is um, before we can stop the discussion. Um, but well, there haven't been any motions to amend it, so this is what it is, right? Well, I think you already this have a problem right here. We've amended it a little bit, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, I, 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 have, we, have we agreed it's regarding or in the matter of? I mean, I'm just trying to get the language straight. So for your sake. Um, and for the sake of the committee. Yeah. So you can't use a semicolon. There's got to be something. 
is that yeah. acceptable in the matter of term limits? And um, again, this is your motion. So I'm not trying, you tell me what you want in it. But if a person has served six years or will have served is an, an amendment to your original language, which I understood to be right. a friendly amendment. Yes, friendly. Yeah. Okay. And you want to keep in cases where special, okay. So that everything, the wording is as you wish it to be. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, now, I think we're, we are ready to go to a vote. Um, any further discussion? All right. Um, I'm going to start uh, this time uh, with Mandy Jo. No. And uh, Pat. Yes. Hi. And uh, Sarah. Hi. And Darcy. Yes. And the chair. Chair's going to vote aye. Um, so the vote is four to one. Um, so uh, this will be, I will be in contact with the president and um, see what she wishes to do in terms of the agenda. Um, in the report, I will try to capture some of the debate. Um, and I think I will acknowledge that from the chair's perspective, um, this is being presented or recommended primarily for the council to make up its mind. I may very well vote against this actually in uh, council, but I think it's important that it get to the council. And I just hope it doesn't take up as much time in the council as it has taken up with us today, but that's just the way it is. So, um, yeah. all right, uh, item two. Um, we need to talk about the charge for DAB. And uh, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment. I'm going to uh, go open up um, the, uh, make sure I've got the right document. It is this one, let me make sure. Yep, all right. So, um, Put this up. Everyone see it? Oh, that didn't help. <laughs> Mandy, you have uh, given this uh, more thought, I think, than anyone. Um, but we need to, first of all, um, agree on the language of the charge. And then I'm not sure we're going to have enough time today, but this, uh, we do need to begin thinking about the process um, that this is going to entail. Um, and I have a document on that I can put up in a moment. But um, you had raised, I think, two concerns, Mandy, and I believe that this is a slightly changed version from what we saw at council. Can you point out the changes that, are you able to point out the changes that have been made um, to this document? Um, yeah, so so I think Lynn forwarded you a document and she had admitted she, or said she attached the wrong one at the council meeting or something. But to, to start with, I have a couple of clerical ones at large should probably have a hyphen in front of it or between it. Um, okay. So this is, uh, are we looking right at- Right where our cursor is. Okay, right large has the hyphen. Um, right. And then th that was the main clerical one. Um, so what was deleted from the one that was at the council was the extra stuff, um, the non required stuff. Um, okay. On and so it was two bullet points not attached to these four. Okay. Um, okay. I support that deletion, as I said, at the council level. I also have a request to add one thing and then a couple of different changes to the charge section of the document due to that. Um, and then I wanted to talk about the report date. Um, Good. Um, before I go back to Mandy, any questions uh, or comments from other members of the committee? 
this is time sensitive. That's something we'll talk about before we're done this morning in terms of the time demands on us. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about timeline, but okay, Mandy, if you'd like to go ahead. Yeah, and hopefully my battery will last. It's not charging with a plug-in, but um, the bullet I would like to add, well, first of all, in the charge section, um, down, down on the second page, um, after statutory and before requirements, I would like to add and charter section 7.4, right in the second line. Right yeah. So it would read following MGL chapter 54, section one, two, and four statutory and charter section 7.4 requirements. Um, and charter seven, I'm sorry, 7.4. Seven, section 7.4. Um, voting precinct in the third bullet point should be capital initial capped. It is one time, but um, it's not in the second. The third second bullet, bullet point. Second sentence. Second sentence of the third bullet point. The bullet point that says if it right, district. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, right. Not one, voting precincts. Capitalizing. Um, Thank you. And right. then. Um, the bullet point I want to add is um, it would go at the very end of right there, yep. and it would be each district shall, comma to the extent possible, comma cluster together centers of common interest or neighborhoods, comma considering, comma but not limited to, comma places where people live, congregate, recreate, worship, shop, and learn. It is a direct quote from Charter Section Seven Point Four. All right, so if you will kindly just slow a little slower to the extent possible, comma. Cluster together. All right, just a second, cluster together. Centers of common interest or neighborhoods. Interest yeah. is singular. Singular, thank you. And then comma, considering comma, but not limited to comma. places where people live, and it's just a list, so there'll be commas, live, comma, congregate, recreate, worship, shop, and learn. Each district shall to the extent possible cluster together centers of common interest or neighborhoods, considering but not limited to places where people live, congregate, recreate, worship, shop and learn. You're introducing this bullet point and really in response to the uh, what you introduced earlier above, which was, um, right, where where was that? Um, where you entered the charter, right. Um, it's statement. part of charter section 7.4 that right, right, when the exactly. charter was drafted right. was pulled out of the quote. Yeah. Okay, all right. George. Yes. Uh, where are we? Um, We're right now down here under James, each district. If going to the th third bullet point. Under charge? Yeah, and the second sentence, uh, yeah. when dividing a district into voting precincts, not voting precinct, should be no voting precinct. Thank shall you. Thank you. No voting yeah. precinct shall be so formed that it will be partly in one congressional district and partly in another congressional district. Thank you. Okay. Any other, we can go through this um, together line by line, but. Um... I just have a general question, George. Please. Um, um, this is all required by, we're being required to do this by state law, right? Yes, yes. Um, pardon? And the charter. And the charter. And do we foresee, uh, much change in our districts? Line? I, I don't think we do, but on the other hand, it all seems to depend on the census. Um, and the census numbers won't be getting to get into us until the end of September. Um, but I doubt that that will really change anything. Mandy? So the other thing I would add is the district lines are really based now on the, the complicating factor that the Charter Commission only had certain options for combination. 
based on 10 precincts in order to make five districts that didn't necessarily take into consideration centers of common interest or neighborhoods, considering where places people live, congregate, recreate, worship, shop, and learn. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the first, this, is, this will be the first time ever that the, the district advisory board gets to draw and split to five, not to 10. And that makes a huge difference in terms of potentially makes a huge difference in terms of what that scary mandarin. <laughs> no, but I guess your point, Mandy, is this actually will be not the usual uh, sort of process. It's going to be actually a very different one and a first time one. And so it's going to be important and somewhat challenging, probably. So irrespective of what the census says, um, just doing this to create five districts. Um, so they might not necessarily uh, go along li the lines of the previous precincts. Yeah. And it would depend create... on what the committee members choose. Would right, be my... right. Okay. That would be horrendously complicated. Well, yeah, it could create, but again, that's a, something they're going to have to wrestle with. And so our job is simply to make sure the charge is, is clear, consistent, actionable, and uh, also to begin the process of of uh, recruiting and um, uh, interviewing and recommending. I don't know where that came from. Um, okay, so we don't have to talk about the substance of it. I just wondered. Um, I think that's pretty much given. I think what is not completely determined is the composition. So, so could I put on the reports before we do composition? I'm sure, so under reports, Yep. It, it's got an empty date. Um, you know, I, I think there's I think there's a state law that is already going to be violated because the census is late. Um, so I don't know whether we want to try and put a date in. One option is within 60 days of receiving final census numbers from the state. Um, one option is in accordance with state law. Um, it, the, the state's going to set a date by which the council has to act, is my guess. To so adopt. the safest would be in accordance with state law. We're certainly not going to come up with a date. I mean, that, yeah. right? or, uh, we could. We could pick any date we like. <clears throat> we don't even know when we're getting the numbers. So, exactly. right. so provide a report to town council. In um, accordance with state law. In accordance with state law. That includes the following. A description of the process utilized, key points and deliberation recommendation regarding districts. Okay, all right. It, we probably want SME status. So that I don't think that has to go on the charge, but it needs part of the vote when we vote the charge. Okay. All right. Are we prepared to, and I'm not sure what our actual official act should be. Should we be declaring this clear, consistent, actionable, and then ready to send back to the council? I think that would be the normal thing we would do. I think it's also a recommendation to adopt. And a recommendation to adopt. So um, maybe just the recommendation to adopt would be sufficient. Um, uh, take advice from anyone, whether they want the one simply recommendation to adopt, or you want we declare this to be one, two, or one vote? We could have two votes. I, I have. Please. I'm getting, I'm looking at voting members and it says two counselors, preferably at large, which means it could be two counselors that weren't at large or one in one. But I I feel uncomfortable. I, I don't think it has to, I think preferably at one, at least one counselor, preferably at large, but I don't see why two have to be at large. My yeah. instinct is, Pat, that it's to, you know, if you it's are actually going to be running in a district, so you're a district counselor. No, I understand. Right, exactly. So that you probably wouldn't want someone like that on this body. Yeah, but I don't know whether I want three, two of our current um, at large counselors. counselors. Yeah. Uh, at large counselors, uh, I don't have the same respect for all three of them, and 
Um, I, I feel like counselors, regular counselors should have input into the same thing. Um, I feel like right now the three counselors are a block and, you know, should there, be counselors, should there be counselors at all? Should, hmm? there be counselors, should there be counselors at all? Why are counselors serving on this? Is state law required? Good Does question. it have to be? No, I don't know. Does it have to be nine voting members? So nine is per the charter. Does the charter Does it, dictate? It, uh, it, that's, that's right up top. The town council shall appoint a district advisory and board composed of nine members from diverse geographical areas plus the town clerk or the clerk's designee. Right. It doesn't say anything about counselors. That is correct. So it doesn't prohibit counselors, but it doesn't require counselors. Right, but you're defining the way it's stated now is that it's defined that two of those members need to be counselors. I agree okay. with that. That I don't think, I think any counselor Okay. May not be objective in the same way that I mean because even at large you you might want to have I don't know a person could potentially I'm not pointing any fingers I'm just saying if this is going to stay for a very long time if we're going to do this again in however mm -hmm. many years mm -hmm. even at large could be could be biased. Well, I would certainly want to draw District Three just to have Dana Street and Blue Hills. Um, <laughs> First not of all, because it, it would save me a lot of time in terms of knocking on doors. Um, yeah, I so, want okay. to district two, so I have South Point and stuff because I get a lot of votes, you know. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> so uh, it sounds like I'm hearing at least from some of my committee members that they would strike preferably at large and just say two counselors. Mandy. That, that would be fine with me. Um, I, I have the same feeling as George does as to why at large might be less biased, but I don't have a problem with it. Um, another option um, is to potentially say one counselor and one charter commission member. I don't know whether you'd get charter commission members to apply, but they've sort of had to make this decision at least initially on mm -hmm. the five districts and how to combine the 10 precincts into five districts. It was quite an interesting conversation when it was done. Mm -hmm. And the that's why I want you on here, but I don't think I want to go back to the charter commission. Yeah, that, and I just thought I'd bring that up as a potential yeah. other option. But uh, you know, I certainly would support you on this and I and you have that experience. So I don't think so it sounds like we're going to strike, preferably at large. Um, we're going to, um, um, so anything else? Two members of the Board of Registrars and five residents, one from each of the existing districts. Um, I mean, you could take out counselors and just have seven residents, but. Um, I would be for taking out counselors. I know um, that's probably not going to be. Yeah, I think I would be too. We could yeah. go with one counselor and six residents, at least one from each existing district. Uh, I mean, the point of having counselors is that it is, you know, I guess would be that um, they do bring practical real world experience in, in um, politicking. And, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. If we're gonna yeah. limit counselors, I, I really think we should not have them be chairs of committees like this where there's a mix of uh, residents and counselors. I think that's a mistake on several committees. So uh, I don't have a trouble with counselors being on it. I just have the trouble with the preferably at large. Hmm. Pat, can you just explain why you, I mean. Go ahead. I guess for me, it's more of an issue of that anyone who is a counselor and who is thinking about running again might have a bias. Yeah although they have the expertise. To, to me, I'd almost rather have, and I'm just spitballing, but I, I, I would almost rather have somebody from the Charter Commission who has talked about it before yeah. than to actually have two counselors. And that makes sense. I just, I just, I just, I'm not, I think it would be natural. I think it would be natural no matter how much of a fair human being you are to, to maybe have some, some bias. And again, I'm thinking in, you know, for however many years we do this, I'm not necessarily thinking about right now. Well, then, it, hmm. 
And it also seems like there's a like a hierarchy, right? Because I'm sure that resident members would probably in, in some way, well, maybe not. <laughs> We're in Amherst, but. Um, no, no. What I'm worried about by saying the council can't be the chairs. Uh, I could go with what you're saying if we increased it to seven residents, one of whom would need to have been on the um, charter commission. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Those are good questions and good issues. Um, I, I certainly hear the point that um, there would be a conflict of interest, certainly for someone who is considering running again or is running again, to be on a body that's going to, um, on the other hand, that's what Congress does all the time, so. Yeah, and look how it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And look what it's done. <laughs> exactly, right, right. So I think probably most of us would agree that an independent commission would work much better nationally. Um, I'm not that much worried about Amherst, but I, I think the argument's a Mandy good one. Mandy has her hand up. Sorry, please, Mandy. Yeah, no, I just, I, a good conversation, right? Because it's, it's always concerning when you put the political element in. Um, I do want to point out, and I don't know whether this has any bearing, that whatever districts are drawn under this district advisory board, because we're so late getting the census numbers, it won't actually apply to the upcoming November 2021 election where the councilors that are currently on the council are being elected. It would apply to the elect council election after that. Um, so I don't know whether that, um, I think the, issue is the, the concern about things because the, the, the current councilors may or may not run for re-election, but if they are, they don't know, they're, they're not drawing for the election happening in six months. But um, they're still maybe part of a, they have a certain political opinion, which I think we've already kind of talked about that councilors are elected and, and I see what you're saying about them being able to have, you know, make their own judgment calls. And even when you're working with numbers, I think that there is still uh, a fact for certain judgment calls to be there. I, I think I would still maybe be more comfortable, you know, and, and counselors also lots of times, and if you don't run for reelection, you may be looking for people who will run for reelection. And again, I'm not talking about, and I'm just talking about like you're saying, Mandy, this is going to be, you know, this may happen, you know, again, and even 50 years down the road, I think I would still want to maybe I mean, I don't know if there'll still be charter commission members left, but I, I still think that counselors might not be as objective. Can I ask a clarifying question? Please. Uh, this happens when a census has been taken. Is that correct? Every 10 years, yeah. Every 10 years. So it doesn't seem like, um, I'll be dead, but... Um, <laughs> So what we'll puts you on this body? Yeah. As, uh, <laughs> You're clearly disinterested. <laughs> um, I, yep. I don't know. I, it just it's not going to be happening very often. And there's and 10 years from this next from this one, I don't even know if the charter commission would be important then. So what are the what are the What's the mix of residents and experience that we want? I mean, if, if the members of the board of registrars seems to me to be kind of critical, they're the ones who actually know what's going on even more than the charter commission, I think. Um, if we could guarantee two members of the charter commission be willing to serve, I would be sympathetic to, to, to that. Yeah. Um, uh, Darcy? Yeah. Um, by the way, I've had my hand up for I'm quite sorry. a while now. I apologize. Um, <laughs> well, we never know with you, honey. Yeah, no. no I, I was, I've been, my mind's been occupied on other things. I apologize. Yeah. So I would, um, uh, I would um, agree with Sarah that I, I don't really see why there should be counselors or charter commission members on this thing that it should be, you know, my preference would just be seven residents. And um, I'm not sure how to disperse the additional two residents, um, but um, I, yeah, I think 
I, I don't think there's any reason for counselors to be on this. All right. Um, I was hoping we could get through this today, but I'm thinking that, um, no, it's all right. I mean, we could, but I'm thinking that what I'd like to do is temporarily stop sharing this for a moment. We're not going to, we're we can come back to it if we wish and vote on it, but I'm going to stop sharing this for a moment um, and put up a timeline. So let's see if I can um, find it quickly. Yeah, I want us to just think a little bit about, um, let's have a look at this. So I always thought, thought we could create the draft charge today and it has to go out to Michelle Tassinari at the elections division for her review. Um, so if we don't get it done today, and I'm not saying that we will or we won't, um, but we're now, we have 15 minutes technically left. Um, it then goes to her um, and then she sends it back and hopefully it says it's fine. Meanwhile, um, we would meet again on April 7th and we'd continue to work on the uh, process and timeline for recruiting, interviewing and recommending appointees to DAB. And down below, I've just, and this is all draft preliminary, just, you know, seat of the pants, but I just started listing what I imagine would be the process and timeline for creating the DAB. And I put in some dates um, just for the sake of, you know, argument. But for instance, that, you know, we don't get the numbers from the state until at, at the earliest September 30th. And then supposedly they have 60 days to do their job. So that's the end of November. Um, so what's the point of appointing a body um, earlier than basically around the end of September. In other words, what, what is it for them? What can they do um, in the interim? Then why, then why do the um, interviewing and recruiting back in March and April? I, I, I agree, I agree. That, so that's all, these are all provisional dates and they're all based on, uh, they're, I have a basic confusion or, or just question about the, the, the timeline or the rush. Um, I'm getting a sense from the president that she'd like this done quickly. And so that's why I'm pushing it along. But um, maybe what her concern is simply the process. She just wants to know what the process is gonna be. And she wants the charge obviously settled. And then the rest of this may not happen for a number of months. Um, but this is what I envision would be, whatever the dates turn out to be, um, we would eventually post a notice like we would do for finance. We would solicit CAFs, I assume, we would urge people to apply. We would, each of us individually would go out to people in our districts and say, would you consider doing this? Um, and then we would uh, look at the pool and we have to declare it sufficient. Then we'd have to conduct, would you have to conduct interviews? I guess we would. Um, then eventually we would have to make a recommendation to the council. Um, and then all this would be done, I think, prior to the census numbers becoming available. We wouldn't want to wait until that point because that really would be bad. Right. So we want to have this body in place. The question is when, I don't know. The summer is a terrible time. Yeah, hang on, stuff. George. Mandy's but, got hand up. Mandy, please. Yeah, so um, I think the earlier the better, even though there might not be much that can be done, but because it's such a strict timeline and it's what I feel like is might be a really compressed timeline. I mean, during the holidays, right? Um, potentially. Um, or the start of a school year or things um, that having the committee in place ahead of time and having already let them meet once or twice to elect chairs to figure out themselves to talk about what the process is and have all that preliminary stuff done, um, including potentially identifying um, you know, things that could be done ahead of time. You can't draw lines, but you can identify the clusters of common interests um, and things like that without that. numbers. There's, there's potentially things that could be done ahead of time before you get the numbers that might allow the redistricting itself once the numbers are in to go along a little smoother and feel a little less compressed if we do it soon. Um, and, and my thinking is the earlier we can do it, the less we're in summer while we're doing it in terms of the appointment. Yeah. Okay, so we want to move with uh, deliberate speed. So um, I'm going to leave this uh, document in the uh, folder for next time. Um, I'm going to take it down now for a moment and go back to the charge, because if we could agree 
in the next 10 minutes or so that the charge is adequate. I can then send it to Tassinari and start this going. If we feel, and we may very well feel that we can't resolve some issues about the charge today, that obviously will be a, a prime issue for our next a meeting in one week. So it will now be April 8th, uh, perhaps, or, or 9th when I send this to Tassinari. But um, so people, I mean, this just gives you an idea of what we're, we're in for uh, as a committee over the next couple of months, uh, or at least next month or two, I think. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing this. Um, I'm going to uh, go back quickly and put the uh, charge up and we need to decide in the next few minutes whether we want to try and hammer this out or whether we want to um, come back to it with some time to think some more about issues like um, counselors or no counselors, if not counselors, seven residents, uh, charter members. There's some issues here in terms of uh, composition um, that we can try to resolve now. I think everything else is pretty much okay. I think Mandy's done a good job going through this. She's made some changes that I think were, were acceptable. Um, I don't see any issues right now except about composition. Can we resolve this to our satisfaction in the next 10 minutes? Or do people want more time to, to think about this and to think about, you know, if you don't have counselors, then is it just seven residents and five of them come from the districts and the other two, you know, I don't know, um, charter members and no charter members? Um, that's my question. Mandy. I just did a little bit of research um, and I can certainly do more. It appears Northampton, it's the city clerk that redraws all the lines. There's no committee. It appears in East Hampton, it's the town council that redraws the lines. Or the <laughs> <laughs> East Hampton. All right, let's hear it from so, East Hampton. So I, okay. I just wanted to bring that up. Those are the only two I looked at. Um, I haven't <laughs> gone to, yeah, just, just to see in terms of what their charter language are is, and that's what the charter language is in those two. Um, to, as a point of, it, it varies widely yes. in, towns as to what the composition or who is redrawing these lines and doing the updating and all every 10 years. Um, so I don't think there's any precedent one way or another. I think the last um, redistricting committee actually had a select board member on it. Um, I, I, we'd have to check. Um, there were nine members. Everyone was from one of the nine precincts at the time. I think we might have added a 10th precinct 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of them might have been a select board member. I, I think when Lynn was looking at the report, she indicated that that person had, but it could have been a form of select board member for all I know. Um, so I just wanted to point that out that it's, so it's not- It's all over the map, yeah. It's yeah. all over the map. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. think it's out of line to have counselors. It no. might be good to have counselors. Um, yeah. I, I certainly prefer that or charter commission. We could say two counselors or charter commission members. Um, I don't know, given there were only nine charter commission members, whether there are any and other than me that would be interested in well, serving on it. Um, and I we could, we could absolutely say it and I would love to serve on this committee yeah. if there is a counselor position or a charter commissioner yeah. position. Um, yeah. But um, you know, I'm I, that's that's where I am. Pat, how oh, that was? Okay. I as I'm. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Definitely that, take that out preferably at large, which I think we've agreed to. I think I could go with counselors, and I might want to be one of them. So who knows? Over my dead body. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I too. I think counselors. I think I could go with that. I'd like to just leave counselors in and send this off to Tassinari, but I think two members of the committee probably don't agree, so they need to speak up. But I think we just need to resolve this issue of voting members. And um, I think we could just take out preferably at large, send this to Tassinari and get this started. But let's hear from Sarah and or from Darcy. I don't want counselors, but at the same time, I'm gonna I cannot think fast on my feet right now who else I would put on this um, that I didn't feel like could potentially have a bias. 
so I, I would ask just maybe to give me a little bit of time just until like what the seventh to, to maybe try to come up with something that seems satisfactory. And if I can't, then, <laughs> you know, I go along with it, but right now I don't feel comfortable with the counselor part. So you'd like some more time to mull this over. Not a lot, but just no, enough I to. No, I understand. I know. Mandy. I just have an idea in terms of sending off to um, Ms. Tassinari that I doubt the composition is going to make a difference on her opinion as to whether it's legal or not <laughs> um, or follows state law. And so maybe we could put in a, you know, that the, we could say that the composition is still up, you know, it will be nine and it's up in you know, we could put some things in there, but I'll really allow her to dig into the purpose and the charge section, which is probably the more important sections. So you think this could be sent ahead? I want to check with Lynn, obviously, but your thought is it could be sent ahead to Tassinari with that note. And unless she objects, she could do what she needs to do. And by the time we get it back, we can make our decision on the 7th. It might be possible. I don't know what other yeah, committee. I, can, I certainly, if the committee's comfortable with that. So um, I would just leave this as a, as a placeholder. We haven't determined whether we're going to have counselors or not, but everything else we are agreed to. Um, I don't know if we need to actually have a vote on that or not. That seems good. So just a, just an understanding, and that we would we would reserve the vote for when we actually uh, decide about the composition, and then we would then it would go to council. So can't. Um, I have to look at my calendar again, but essentially we we'll slow it down a little bit, but it's, I think not that much. I think uh, I would like to give Sarah the time she needs. So I no, I think this, that makes sense. So, so we're going to not make a decision on this today. We're certainly not going to vote on it. We're not going to decide on the composition. We're going to give everyone a chance to think some more about it. Um, in the meantime, I get, I'm getting permission or it seems consensus to try and send this on to Tassinari um, and if that works, great. And if it doesn't, well, then we'll just do it a little later. But, uh, and we will pick this up again on April 7th. Um, uh, we'll also pick up the process. That document will be in your folder for you to look at. The dates, again, are all just pretty much made up, but it's just to get the steps. And so have, you can ponder that. Review of stormwater and IDDE bylaw. This is item number four. Uh, Mandy has gone through it as she does so often and made a number of just uh, basically editing changes. I was going to send that. So my mistake here, though it actually probably was a good mistake, was not to invite Beth Wilson. Um, and obviously Beth would have spent two hours <laughs> watching <laughs> us. <laughs> would have been we don't know. We would have taken her first, you know. Uh, probably, but I think it, it, this worked out the way it should have. So um, Beth will be invited and she's already agreed to come. Um, I'm going to send her what Mandy has done um, just for her to look at. Um, and it will be in the packet for you to review as well. Um, but we will take that up first thing, actually, uh, on the 7th, out of respect for Beth. And I, I think mostly it's just uh, minor it, uh, you know, typos and, and corrections and so on. But we do need to do that. Um, so that will be um, in the packet, including Mandy's uh, changes. Um, we'll take up proclamations next time. I, I will just, it's in your packet, but it will be in there again. I just want us to go through and, and see what the process is and, and see if we have any changes or concerns. Uh, there's an email from Alyssa Brewer, which I think uh, I think I understand most of it. And I'd like uh, us to go through it and make sure that her concerns are being addressed. Um, so um, we're going to postpone that for next time as well. Um, obviously, uh, Pat was ready. Um, Mandy was ready. Um, but we'll have to put it off for next time. Uh, bylaws, general bylaws, 3.26, that will be an item for next time. Okay, um, so that is that. Um, minutes I've looked at, I'm satisfied with them, but if anyone has any concerns or if they had, had, haven't had a chance to look at them, I can postpone that. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes of March 17, 2021 as uh, presented. I'll move that. All right, we have a motion, any second? I'll second it. Second, DeAngelis. DeAngelis, thank you. So we have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Second. That's quite all right. So motion made by Mandy, seconded by Pat. Um, I'm going to go to a vote immediately, and the chair is going to vote yes. Um, Pat? Aye. And uh, Darcy? 
going to abstain because I didn't read them. Sorry. That's right. You don't have to. You can abstain. It's all right. Um, Mandy? Aye. And Sarah? Aye. All right. So the vote is four in favor and one abstain. The minutes of March 17, 2021 are accepted as presented. Um, items for next time, very quickly. Um, let me just put something up on this screen if I can find it fast, which means I probably can't. Um, uh, yeah, here it is. We have Arbor Month coming up, guys. And I have no idea who is the sponsor of Arbor Month. Anyone have an idea? Uh, the tree warden. <laughs> is, it, is it Alan <laughs> Snow? Should I reach out to Alan Snow? Uh, but on April 7th, um, so let me just put this, let me open this file. I hope it will it open. Yes, it did open. Let me just share the screen. Let me do this again. Um, there we go. I'm getting good at this, guys. This is scary. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I might right. I might have a, a real job when I leave this business. <laughs> All right. Um, Stormwater and IDE, that's going to be April 7th with Beth Wilson. We will uh, also be still wrestling with the DAB. Uh, that's not on this list. I guess I can add it. It is. Um, it is? Okay. Uh, right. It is. Thank you. <laughs> uh, bylaws for contingent consideration. FinCom appointment. We really need to start thinking about this. CRC is already ahead of the game. Your chair is a little slower on the uptake. Um, we need to publicize the vacancy. We need to approve our selection criteria and appointment process uh, or selection process. And we need um, to discuss our preference. I think we've already discussed that enough. Um, and our question is just, I have reached out to Bob Hegner to see. Excellent. If, um, and I assume that's okay. Yep. Um, I've done it uh, through the chair actually, but if, that, if the chair doesn't get an answer. So, um, that's what's coming up. He's an excellent member of the committee. Yeah, no, I think he's a strong candidate, but um, we just don't know if he's going to reapply. Um, but, so that will be uh, also on the agenda for next time because the, your chair needs to get this start process started. Um, we need to send out a notice of vacancy, um, and at some point, and I'll make a timeline for you. Um, but it does raise the question we're not going to discuss now which is what does the chair say to people <laughs> when they apply but he'll have to figure that out he'll come up with something arbor month do you think alan snow i don't know um but we should get that out uh, at the next meeting um and i think the month of april the council meets again on the 12th hi hi george it's athena um ah, athena, I'm, please. we're doing agenda setting later today and and i was going to ask where we are with arbor month and i think there's also a Southeast Asian Heritage Month proclamation that may be coming um, Jen, that Jen Moisten is working on with the okay. racial equity team or Fine. something. Good. So uh, um, if I if I hear about that today, I can let you know. I have a copy. Well, you have a copy, I'm sure, of the last Arbor Month proclamation, and it could yep. probably just be reissued. Uh, but normally, we we state who the sponsor is. Um, so that would yeah, be I think helpful. it might be the Shade Tree Committee, but committee, An fine, Angela, fine. Angela or Jen Moiston would right. know. I'll, I'll check right. on that. And then I wanted to do it today, but we didn't get to it, which is item five, discussion of what happens to proclamations once voted by GOL. Um, since we don't have any today, but we might have some uh, on next week, um, we do want to talk about it with Athena present um, to make sure that we're all on the same page. But we'll do that next time. I think we, we're out of time today. All right, so that's what's in the, in the pipeline. Uh, do we have public present? Let me stop sharing and take a look. I haven't had a chance to look today. Um, I think Adrian was here. But yeah. Adrian, I think, is still here. Yeah. Okay, so we have one attendee. So this is the time, believe it or not, uh, for public to speak if they wish. Um, and you have up to three minutes. All you need to do is raise your hand. Adrian, you had raised and lowered your hand. So it's lowered now. So if you'd like to speak, please push that button. Please. All right, Adrian, if you would, um, Athena, bring her into the meeting um, and allow her to speak. Just state your name and where you live and you have three minutes. 
Hello and thank you. Uh, my raise and lower hand button seems to be having a problem this morning. <laughs> um, I, I listened with great interest to your, I, I'm here to, uh, in particular for the district advisory board and I have less comments to make because thanks to Mandy Jo, um, I was, I noted the, um, uh, that last and very important bullet in regard, bullet regarding uh, community and neighbors and thus and such. And Mandy Joe, thank you for that. So um, I do have a question as well as a comment regarding the, uh, the composition of the committee. And I will try to keep within my three minutes. First, the 2011 committee, uh, the district advisory board on which I serve, was composed entirely of non-elected uh, members. They were drawn from all 10 precincts of Amherst, I think wisely. The um, appointment process went to nine of those uh, 10 precincts uh, with the rationale provided. MDL law does state the composition of nine in a community, I believe, Mandy Joe, you can look that up. And of all of the elements of MGL 54, the sections continually respond, uh, refer to precincts. Now, I know we're going to five districts, perhaps even five voting districts in the future. So um, a couple of comments regarding the composition. I would hope that we keep this independent of any politics or partisanship. For me, having um, either town councilors with all due respect with the amount of work you pour into our town, or two of the three members of the board of registrars, that's four out of uh, nine of the positions to really people who are politically aligned in one way or another. I feel it's in the best interest of Amherst that we keep this absolutely free of the kind of divisiveness that may occur if we throw it to um, body that represents um, anything other than an independent resident whose vitally interest is I've always been in the census and, and maps of state, national, local. So um, with that having been said, I hope you take that under consideration. Further, um, I would like to add, my understanding is that the municipalities are going to be receiving preliminary numbers uh, before the state even gets them, because the state must, as you know, establish congressional districts. And it seems that we're going to get these preliminary numbers, so good for you for sticking to the timeline, because we all may be surprised that well before September 30th, which is the drop dead date for that deadline, that Amherst, as well as all the other municipalities in the state, get those numbers. The state has them through the American uh, Community Service, which does regular uh, census to take the um, pulse, if you will, of where we need to go when we redraw our lines and our borders and our boundaries um, for our new maps. So I think that's it. Um, so thanks so much. Um, I'll join you again, hopefully, next week to see where you land on this. Over and out. Thank, Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. I'll try to lower my hand. It's already lowered. Uh, yeah. I, we never you. saw it, honey. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So um, you, we have completed. Um, every, any of you ever watch Click and Clack? Remember Click and Clack? You don't know they're from NPR? Okay, sorry. Right. They did a wonderful radio show for years on cars. It was a great show. Right. Yeah, it was a and great they would show. always end. You, you've now wasted... You wasted two. <laughs> I won't repeat what they said. Perfectly good hours, exactly. right? Exactly. You know, Darcy, you know. You have not actually wasted. You've done a good job. I, we just didn't get through my list, but that's that's not really that important. We'll, we'll take it up next week. So we're meeting a week from today, believe it or not. Uh, same time, same place. Uh, got a pretty good idea of what we've got on our plate. Um, I will be in contact with the president about the uh, motion we passed today and then decide what she wants to do. I'm sorry? <laughs> and um, uh, I will reach out to uh, the president also about the uh, uh, DAB, uh, getting the charge out, see if we can get that out and back. All right. All right. Go well, everyone. Take care. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.